Hey viewers, this is Ace Tuning Outdoors. In this video I'm going to show you how to do a front end brake job on that 2013 Jetta 2.5 Highline. Uh, it was actually a lot easier than I thought. I did it a couple weekends ago. It took me a couple hours. The weather was good. I did it just in my driveway. Um, so yeah, if you're new to the channel, um, don't forget to uh, hit that like button or dislike, comment. You know, whatever. I'm always open-minded to tips and and helpful information. So, uh, yeah, hope you enjoy the video. Maybe this can save you uh, save you a bit of money if you're a jet owner yourself. And All right, let's look at the tools you're going to need to do this job. So we got some anti seize here, larger hammer, dead blow hammer. You need a seven millimeter Allen key or a socket Allen key to use a small impact gun with. Right over here. Uh, you're gonna need some penetrating oil. You're gonna need some lubricant for those slide pins, like a slide pin grease. Something that can handle heat, so preferably something that's good for brake parts. This is a brake clean for rotors to make sure you get rid of all the oil residue. Steel brush. You're gonna need a extension there, half inch drive. 21 millimeter socket. 17 millimeter socket. Just a knife or something to cut with to open up the packaging. You're gonna need a T30. Like torque bit 30. There it is there. Some needle nose pliers. Or in a pick would do too to get those wheel bolt plastic caps off. You need a C clamp. C clamp, six inches of good size. There we uh can use that to push the piston back into the caliper. The parts I used on the car were uh, from uh, Max Advanced Brakes there. So I went with carbon ceramic pads and then uh, the black drilled and slotted rotors also from the same company. Check them out. Good pricing. Lots of different uh, brake packages for many different vehicles. Alright, so we're going to start by taking out these uh, wheel bolt covers with your needle nose pliers. Now we're going to jack the car up. Alright, so now I'm going to take this wheel off. I'm going to grab a 17 millimeter socket and you're going to grab your uh, Volkswagen wheel bolt key.
So after the wheels removed, this is what it looks like here. Just factory Volkswagen brakes. So what I want to do first is uh, remove the caliper from the rotor. By doing that, uh, I want to gain access to the back of the caliper so I can get to these uh, bolts back here. And there's one at the bottom as well. And uh, you got to take your 21 millimeter socket and do that. I'm going to hop inside the car. Just use the steering wheel to rotate the assembly right now that that's done have way more accessibility to the back of the caliper here. Alright, so you're going to want to take these uh, little plastic covers off. Like little plugs. And you're gonna grab your 21 millimeter socket and remove the caliper bolts. Now that the caliper is free and clear, you can just hang it up on the shock tower. Out of the way. Then you can work on removal of the rotor. Alright, so now we're going to remove this rotor. You're going to have to grab your, uh, your T30 or your Torque 30. Sometimes you gotta give a little tap. Move this little rotor screw. Then you wanna put a wheel bolt back on. Now, if you don't plan to reuse these rotors, remachine them and put them back on, then you don't have to worry about giving it a, a hard smack to remove them.
if they don't come off that easy. Then I just use some uh, penetrating oil. Kind of get behind there and on the back side as well. Let that sit for a bit. There we go, so we got the rotor loose now. Penetrating oil definitely help. And the rotor is free from the hub. Set that aside. What I usually like to do with uh, these hub assemblies is clean them up with like a wire brush of some sort. Get all the rust buildup and all that cleaned away. Make a nice clean surface for your new rotor. And then I uh, apply some anti-seize for easy, painless removal in the future. Yeah, now we're ready for the new rotor. All right, so now I want to remove the old brake pads from within the caliper here. First thing I want to do is kind of smack them out if I can. Flat screwdriver. Pull the other one out. Now the one that goes in the piston has these clips. So you gotta make sure you put them in the right orientation. Now that the pads are removed, I can go ahead and pull this bracket out. So I gotta remove this little wiring, this little wire clip. These can be a pain in the butt. Just kind of pry them out with a, a screwdriver. Come out. Alright, so now that this clip was uh, removed, you can go ahead and slide out the bracket. It should come up fairly easy. There you go there. And that's what you're left with.
Usually I like to just give the caliper a quick inspection. Grab my wire brush again and give it a good clean. Take the, the pad bracket. You're gonna grab your seven millimeter Allen key. You're gonna take out these sliding pins. Just come out like that. What I do with those pins is I. Uh, Take a little bit of lubricating compound. Make sure this stuff is good for brakes. Put a little bit on that pin surface there. Kind of like that. Smear it around with your finger. And then slide it in these holes here on the back side. Start to see threads coming out of those holes. <clears throat> there you go, now they're ready and lube for the bracket. Alright, so we got those pins back in, just like that, ready for the bracket. Now it would be time to uh, push this piston back in to make room for the newer, thicker pads. So we're going to open up the hood. Look for that brake reservoir. All right, head secure. So that brake reservoir is located back here. I don't know if you can see that. Basically right back here. And it's got a little screw on cap. So what you want to do is just unscrew it. Alright, so I was able to unscrew it needed both my hands for it but so as long as the cap is just kind of sitting on there on top the reason for that is uh, when you push the piston in of the caliper uh, fluid is going to build up and come back up towards the reservoir through the line so gotta make sure that gets done alright so now we're ready to uh, push this piston back in Alright, so now you're going to take your 6 inch C clamp. Place it within the inside of the piston. As you can see, the piston is getting pushed in. Just want to go nice and slow. There we go. And you can remove the, 
the C clamp. So with the piston fully collapsed inside of it, caliper there, look that's what it should look like. Only gives you about an extra half an inch of clearance. Alright, so now I want to put the new pads in place. Hold the bracket. Start off with this one, with the clips. This one for the outside. I'm going to come in with my bracket. I want to line up my holes. Grab that seven millimeter Allen key. Put in those little sliding pins. Too much force is needed for these. They're pretty small. Slide it backwards in place. So now the pads are in, the brackets reassembled. You can put this spring wire back on. Sometimes you gotta give them a tap so they can cooperate. So now the caliper is ready to go back onto the the hub assembly, the new rotor. So I just hang that up out of the way for now and get the hub ready for the new rotor. Alright, so now it's time to put the new rotor on. So I want to line up that little screw hole again. Sometimes you have to just rotate the hub assembly. Get that little screw hole visible. Line it up with your rotor. And grab your Torque 30. That screw. Thread it back in. 
just a little screw, so I'm gonna have to go crazy with it. Now I grab some brake clean and give it a good clean because last thing you want is oil and dirty residues on the rotor. Wipe it away with a shop towel. So give the back side a spray. There we go. Ready to put the caliper back on. Alright, so now we're going to put the caliper back on. Then grab those bolts that we removed. And uh, I like to put some anti seize on bolts that I remove that I plan to reuse again. So we'll do that. So caliper bolts are in here. Let's put the lower one in. As much as you can by hand. Twenty one millimeter socket. Sometimes I like to make sure that this uh, brake pad dust plate is not bent too far forward so it doesn't make an annoying sound on the rotor. So that looks good there. Time to put the wheel back on. Alright, so now the brakes are on, bolted and secure, new rotors and pads lubricate and everything. I'm going to go ahead and rotate the steering, straighten up the wheels. Probably not good for your tires to be doing this too often. Now the wheels are pointing straight. I gotta make sure I go back here. And you wanna close this reservoir, brake fluid reservoir.
really tight spot. But you can feel it get tight and just gotta get a little bit of a, some pressure. There we go. So that's tightened up. Come back over here to the brake assembly. I'm gonna grab some more anti C's and just put it on the face and the little hub assembly here. That way, when you go to take your rim off after a bad winter, you're not gonna have too much trouble getting it off. Aluminum wheels especially made it on a steel surface uh, tend to seize up and there we go. Let's get that wheel on.